Hello there. We are still continuing with the S4 physics and we are dealing with modern physics. This is the last video, part 4. And I am still your host, Mande Dennis. Uh, my YouTube channel is Mande Dennis Uganda. This is the YouTube channel. It has very many videos for the S4 students and even those in S3 because most of these things, these topics here are handled always in senior three. So if you're in S3, feel free to go to my channel and get the videos that will help you even through this time of the crisis. Now, the, the last time, the previous video we had um, handled the applications or the uses of CROs in measurement of the frequencies and even studying of different waveforms. I want to add an extra number here as I introduced this new video. Uh, this was set in 2004 in paper 2. It's coded 535 stroke 2. That is physics paper 2. And this was number 8. Part A said, what is meant by cathode rays? You remember we said cathode rays are streams of fast moving electrons. Roman 2. With the aid of a labeled diagram, describe how cathode rays are produced by thermionic emission, thermionic emission or thermionic effect. Um, you can refer to the notes to the previous video, part 3, and you'll find this. I'll not go into that. Part B says, with reference to the cathode ray oscilloscope, describe Roman 1, the function of the time base. Remember, we said that the time base is that special circuit that is connected to the, to the X plates and it actually applies an alternating voltage uh, to the X plates. Therefore, the time base, if here the question asks for the function of the time base, the function of the time base is to apply an alternating voltage across, across the X plates so that the electron beam can be deflected horizontally horizontally now describe how the brightness is regulated if you can remember very well uh, we had a low voltage supply and that supply is the one that's re responsible for heating the filament so to control the brightness we regulate the filament current that is the low voltage supply the low voltage uh, which is the low tension supply low tension voltage either either way i think that's better you can call it the low tension uh, voltage you can call it the low voltage supply many ways just don't confuse those words like i was so to regulate the brightness we regulate the amount of current in the, that that passes through the filament and then number two um Remember, we also have what we call the control grid. So the control grid can be made either more negative because it's, an, it, it's at a negative potential. So you can make it either more negative or more positive. And therefore, you should say that the brightness can be regulated in two ways. Roman 1, by regulating the filament current, that's the low tension voltage. And number 2, it's by regulating... The, the the potential of the control grid potential of the control grid because when you make it less negative that means more electrons can pass through it if you make it more negative then less electrons will pass through it part c says a cathode ray oscilloscope that is a cro with time base switched on is connected across a power supply the waveform in figure three is obtained now here we have a figure, um, this is a, a wave, kind of a wave, question, we are told that the distance between each two lines is one centimeter, you see, uh, from this to that, the, between end two lines is one centimeter. Roman 1, identify the type of voltage generated by the power supply, definitely, because we are having a wave here a waveform this shows that the voltage generated here is of alternating current or you can just say an alternating voltage or an ac voltage anyway 
Roman 2. Find the amplitude of the voltage generated if the voltage gain is 5 volts per centimeter. The voltage gain is 5 volts per centimeter. Uh, we will make some writing here. Now, um, look at the amplitude. How do you get the amplitude from this middle position to here? Uh, how many centimeters are represented here? So you see there are two centimeters. And they told us that, that the voltage gain is 5 volts per centimeter. For every centimeter, there are 5 volts. Therefore, our amplitude is going to be, our amplitude will definitely be, uh, 5 times 2 and that gives us 10 10 volts the amplitude is the same as the peak voltage and when they talk about peak to peak voltage just get the peak voltage times 2 ok the question Roman 3 says calculate the frequency of the power if the time base setting on the CRO is 5 exponent negative 3 seconds per centimeter Okay, um, here they're asking us to get a frequency. I'll get back. I'll get back. Let me get back here. We are told, we are told that um, they gave us here. They gave us, um, what was this? They told us that this time base setting on the CRO is 5 exponent negative 3 seconds per centimeter. The time base setting, time base setting is, is 5 exponent negative 3 seconds per centimeter. Mm -hmm. Now, how many centimeters? Uh, uh, covered if for, for one cycle how many how, how many centimeters are in one cycle here you see if you look at this this point up to here to get a complete cycle um, I think I'll change the color of the ink for proper visibility let me use red it's more visible here we are saying from here up to here how many centimeters are represented horizontally I think there are four yes four centimeters now for every centimeter they told us for every centimeter there are five exponent negative three seconds so what's going to be the period the period the time that is taken to make one cycle the period is going to be and change the color again. Come on. Okay. The period is going to be 4 centimeters times this, the 5. So it's going to be 4 times 5 exponent negative, negative 3, which gives us 2.0 exponent negative 2 seconds. Now, therefore, the frequency which they want is 1 over t, which is going to be 1 over 2 exponent negative 2. And that becomes, um, that becomes, what can we write? This becomes 0 0.5 exponent negative, exponent 2, which is same as 5, 5 exponent 1 has... 50 hertz, yeah, I'm getting 50 hertz, you can also try to find out, find out whether it's 50 hertz, 1 over 2, 0 0.5, exponent, so I think that's what you end up with, 50 hertz, for Roman 2, please you can also try to go through and, and find out. I didn't have a calculator here whether what I did was correct, but I think that's right. It's basic mathematics. Okay, now the major reason why I made the last video was to cover these two areas. 
there is the x-rays and then we shall end with the photoelectric emission now x-rays x-rays are electromagnetic waves of very high frequency and short wavelength produced when fast moving electrons strike matter now you all remember very well that if you are looking at the electromagnetic spectra let me draw it here electromagnetic spectra it starts with the gamma rays gamma rays after the gamma rays we go to the x-rays x-rays i think there should be a dash okay then we have the ultraviolet radiations from there we go to the visible lights where violet is here and then red ending the seven colors or the six as the current research shows in infrared infrared after infrared we have microwaves microwaves we have radar waves in same category then you come to tv waves and fm radio waves they are in the same um, range and then we shall go to the am radio waves am radio waves radio waves okay so you realize that x-rays are part of the electromagnetic spectrum they are here just number two that means they have energy just after the gamma rays in the ranking properties of x-rays they travel in a straight line these are just basic they travel in a straight line they, they penetrate matter readily with a high penetrating power they cannot be stopped by wood and by some metal foils and sheets of cardboard but they can be stopped by lead plates of thickness about one millimeter X, X rays also have high penetrating power just because it's just less than that of the gamma rays, but they have high penetrating power. And they cause photoelectric emission, they have no charge, and because they have no charge, they won't they can't be deflected by electric and magnetic fields. And they cause fluorescence of certain substances. For example, when X rays strike zinc sulfide surfaces light will be emitted and that's what that, that's what we call fluorescence they affect all black and photographic plates and lastly they ionize gases those are x-rays like even gamma rays do note x-rays can be detected by using their properties of affecting photographic plates ionizing gases and causing fluorescence of certain substances now how do we produce x-rays i want you to pay close attention here how do we produce x-rays we use what we call the x-ray tube and we're going to write in a very simple way start with something that looks like a as if you're drawing some kind of a car anyway this is a glass envelope a glass tube inside there should be nothing so it, it has to have a vacuum inside here in this space a vacuum then we are going to put a filament with its um, low tension voltage it's related to what we've done before and then we shall have a focusing cup somewhere there then we shall have the anode now on the side of the the filament that's where the cathode is this is a filament cathode with its focusing cup it's going to be the cathode because um, this filament circuit is going to be connected to the to the negative terminal of the extra high tension and then this is uh, on this other side here we are having um, the anode anode which will be connected to the positive and it's always made up of copper because copper is a good conductor of heat since a lot of heat is generated in the process now we shall have a tungsten metal target here tungsten or a metal target we can either use tungsten or platinum So we have the extra high tension, extra high tension or ve a very high voltage. And this is a DC supply. The positive terminal is connected to the anode and negative terminal is connected to this filament circuit, making this to be a negative. Uh -huh. We shall need fins to radiate off the heat that's generated. Now, 
when electrons travel okay let me first take you a little back the low car the, the low tension voltage here supplies the current which makes the heater to heat up and once that filament cathode the heater the filament cathode once it heats up it emits electrons by thermionic emission those electrons will be attracted by the anode and accelerated by the extra high tension and when they strike the metal target 99% of their kinetic energy is converted into heat and so it will be con conducted to the surrounding and lost conducted and then lost the surrounding through the copper cooling fins now observe that the anode is thick because the thicker it is the faster it conducts the heat without heating up so we are saying that when these electrons strike the matter they strike the metal target x-rays are produced so we need to have uh, a lead shield around to protect the users so this is what we call the uh, the, the x-ray tube uh, to label it just look at this just look at this we are saying that the low voltage will supply current which makes the filament cathode to heat up and when it heats up it emits electrons by thermionic emission those electrons are attracted by the anode and accelerated by extra high tension which we are calling the high voltage and when they strike the metal target the tungsten target one percent of their kinetic energy is converted into x-rays and so the x-rays will come and the 99 percent is converted into heat which will be uh, emitted to the surrounding now let me just talk uh, uh, write not really writing let me just uh, present the slide of what i've just explained the filament cathode is heated by current from a low voltage source and the filament emits electrons by thermionic emission you all know that and the emitted electrons are accelerated by very high voltage between the cathode and the anode actually they are attracted first by the anode and as they're being attracted the extra high tension extra high voltage between the cathode and the anode will ensure that they accelerate the electrons strike the metal target of a high melting point attached on the anode and inclined to the electron beam about 99 percent of the kinetic energy of the electrons is converted to heat and about one percent is converted into x-rays and the tube is shielded using lead to avoid damages caused by the x-rays now note the glass tube is evacuated in simple terms there has to be a vacuum inside to prevent collision between the electrons and the air molecules which could cause the electrons to, electrons to scatter the focusing cup is concave so that the electrons are focused or concentrated on a small area of the metal target please the focusing cup has to be there just so that they can concentrate the electrons on a small area or onto a small area of the metal target mm -hmm. and then lastly the anode has a metal target of a high melting point they may ask you a question why is the metal target made up of tungsten the reason is because a lot of heat is generated um, in the process of producing x-rays uh, but because tungsten has a high melting point it can withstand the heat generated and the target is inclined at an angle such that the x-rays are directed through the window in the LED shield question explain the use of the following in the x-ray tube Roman 1 the low tension voltage what does it do I think this is obvious it heats up the cathode which produces electrons by thermionic emission Roman 2 the high voltage supply or the high voltage what does it do it accelerates the emitted electrons from the cathode to the anode by pull, putting the anode at a positive potential and lastly cooling fins they radiate away heat produced 
they radiate away the heat produced at the anode to the surrounding. Those are the cooling fins. Note, sometimes water is used to conduct away heat. Why? Because water has a high specific heat capacity. What is specific heat capacity? We define the specific heat capacity as the amount of heat required required to 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 increase the temperature of a one kilogram mass of a substance by one degree Celsius or by one Kelvin. Energy changes in an X-ray tube. You know very well that the low tension voltage will supply electrical energy, which actually is converted to heat. So we shall have from electrical to heat energy. The heat energy that is for the filament cathode, and then that heat energy will now enable the electrons to move. So we shall have the kinetic energy of the electrons coming from the heat energy, which then on striking, when these electrons strike the fluorescent screen, we end up with heat and not the fluorescent screen. When these electrons strike the metal target, we are looking at an X-ray tube. Sorry about that. When these electrons strike the metal target, we are going to end up with a heat, a lot of heat generated, actually 99%. And then the 1% energy is converted into X-rays. Types of X-rays, how many are they? There are two. I think you all know that. There are hard X-rays and there are soft X-rays. Now, what are hard X-rays? Hard X-rays, these are the X-rays with a short wavelength and a high penetrating power produced when high accelerating voltage is applied between the cathode and the anode. And... Hard X-rays are more energetic, more penetrative, and therefore more harmful to the body cells. Number two, or second type, soft X-rays. I think this should be easy for you to figure out. These are X-rays with a longer wavelength. Now, we are saying with a long wavelength and low penetrating power produced when low accelerating voltage is applied between the cathode and the anode. This does not mean that the this does not mean that soft x-rays have necessarily a long wavelength. That wavelength is long as compared to that of the hard x-rays. So we are saying soft x-rays are x-rays with uh, with uh, a long wavelength and low penetrating power produced when low accelerating voltage is applied between the cathode and the anode. And Soft X-rays carry low energy and they are less penetrating and therefore they are less destructive to the body cells. Okay, what do we mean by quality of X-rays? Quality of X-rays refers to the measure of the penetrating power of the X-rays. The quality of X-rays is determined by the PD across the anode and the cathode. So by increasing the accelerating voltage, the kinetic energy of the electrons is increased such that X-rays have a high penetrating power. What is the intensity of X-rays or what we call the quantity? This is determined by the number of electrons striking the metal target per second. It depends on the temperature of the filament which is surrounded by the filament current. Question. Explain how the intensity of X-rays can be increased. This is a simple one. So if you want to increase the intensity, that is the number of electrons striking the target per second, just increase the filament current such that uh, by increasing the filament current, such um, that increases the number of electrons emitted by the cathode. Sorry about that statement. Let me repeat it. The question was, explain how the intensity of X-rays can be increased. And the answer is very simple. We are saying by increasing the filament current, which increases the number of electrons emitted by the cathode. And this increases the number of electrons striking the target per second. A question, explain how the penetrating power of X-rays can be increased. So this is done by increasing the accelerating voltage between the cathode and the anode. And this increases the kinetic energy of the electrons 
when they strike the metal target, X-rays of high penetrating power are produced. Applications of X-rays, where do we use them? Part A, the medical application, medical use, part A. Medical biological. X-rays are used to investigate bone fractures. This is done because certain X-rays contain hardness that can penetrate the flesh but not the bones. Those are especially the soft X-rays. Roman 2. X-rays are used to treat cancer cells. Very hard X-rays can destroy cancer cells. Okay. Roman 3. They are used to detect lung tuberculosis. This is done based on the fact that diseased lung tissue is denser than healthy lung tissue. Hence, X-rays penetrate healthy lungs more than diseased lungs. Hazards or dangers of X-rays. What are the dangers of X-rays? Roman 1, they can cause cancer. They can cause genetic mutations. Roman 2, they damage eyesight and they can cause deep-seated skin burns. Industrial uses, they are used to detect leakages in pipes. They are used in X-ray crystallography to study crystal structures. Um, they are used in scans to reveal the hidden metals such as guns in inner wares of strangers. Hmm. Safety precautions during the use of X-rays. Roman 1. The time of exposure to x-rays should be limited, please. Don't just unnecessarily expose yourself. Roman 2. There should be shielding of people handling x-ray sources by using lady coats or increasing the shield of the x-tubes, of the x-ray tubes. Um, Roman 3. X-rays must be restricted to affected parts of the body only. X-rays must be restricted. To the affected parts of the body only. Roman 4. There must be increased distance between a person and the x-rays. And then this question, this one is obvious. I won't read through. Similarities between x-rays and gamma rays. Okay. Differences between x-rays and cathode rays. Here they are. I am not going to talk about anyone. I've talked about these things over and over again. Our last part still um, to wind up the topic of modern physics is photoelectric emission. A lot of work was done about photoelectric emission. Actually, the founder of it is Albert Einstein. And in 1905, actually, 1905, the American scientist Milken tried to disapprove uh, Einstein's theory and actually he just ended up by proving it and that's why when in 1904 Albert Einstein was given the Nobel Prize of his work in photoelectric emission actually some people think it was with the relativity, relativity theory no it was with the photoelectric emission that he really uh, got that Nobel Prize and then the following year 1905 it was Milken who got it so what is photoelectric emission photoelectric emission is a process by which electrons are emitted from a metal surface when an electromagnetic radiation of high enough frequency falls on it haha <laughs> all you have to know I told you before that there are two ways by which we can make electrons to be emitted by a metal surface. One way was by heating it and the other one was by was by these these electromagnetic radiations electromagnetic radiations of high enough frequency that can fall on the metal surface and it will make it to release electrons. Okay. Demonstration of photoelectric emission. I want you to pay attention here. Uh, a very simple demonstration. Now let's have let's have a DC supply somewhere. Um, the positive terminal connects to the anode. We are calling this the anode, and the negative terminal to the cathode here. So we shall have a photocell. 
We shall have an anode and a cathode. I already talked about that. So we put a photo cell. When you put a photo cell and you allow onto the photo cells electromagnetic radiations of high enough frequency, for our case we are using we are using UV radiations, ultraviolet radiations. When they strike the cathode, what will happen? Electrons are going to be emitted, and when the electrons are emitted, they complete the circuit and therefore current flows. So when you place a millimeter or galvanometer, you realize that it will deflect, showing that the current is flowing. Now, the real explanation is here in words. A radiation of high frequency is allowed to fall on the cathode and electrons are emitted. Part 2. Electrons are accelerated by the high voltage between the cathode and the anode. And part 3. When the electrons reach the anode, the millimeter deflects showing that the current or the circuit is made complete. And this confirms that photoelectric effect or photoelectric emission has taken place. Now, we can demonstrate photoelectric effect using a gold leaf electroscope, a GRE. Here we use an uncharged zinc plate. We place it in contact with the metal cap of the negatively charged gold leaf electroscope. And the zinc plate also acquires a negative charge by contact. The ultraviolet radiations are directed onto the zinc plate. Hmm. Let me have here. <laughs> okay, we are drawing. We are drawing together. We are drawing together the cathode ray oscilloscope. Okay. There we are. That's the cathode ray oscilloscope. No. Not cathode ray oscilloscope. I am tired. <laughs> this is a gold leaf electro electroscope. A gold leaf electroscope. A gold leaf electroscope. Please let me repeat this as many times as possible. This is a gold leaf electroscope. Now, some of these errors I make them because I stay awake actually um, to get a quiet environment to shoot these videos. I shoot them in the night. Sometimes I'm so tired, that's why I make these mistakes. But I hope you understand what I'm saying. So we are saying that here we have our gold leaf electroscope. And so we place a cleansing plate onto it and allow UV radiations to strike the, the cleansing plate. Now we say that this electroscope is negatively charged. Okay. So let me just actually explain from here. When UV radiations fall on the clean metal, the clean zinc plate, it will, it will release electrons or it will emit electrons. When it emits those electrons, the reason why we made this, this to be negatively charged is because the negative charge on this, the metal cup and the, and the, the clean zinc plate, they will repel away those electrons. Yeah, and when they repel them away, when they go away, the leaf will collapse because it will become more, it will become less negative. Okay, now here we'll see that the gold leaf is seen to fall or to collapse. And this shows that, that electrons have been emitted from the zinc plate by photoelectric emission. And they have been repelled away by the negative charge on the zinc plate. And this results into a reduction in the negative charge from the gold leaf electroscope. From the gold leaf electroscope and the leaf, therefore, falls. Note, when a positively charged gold leaf electroscope is used in the above experiment, the divergence of the leaf does not change. Why? Remember, in electrostatics, we said positive and negative attract each other. So when you use a positively charged gold, gold leaf electroscope, you realize that every electron that will be released, that will be ejected, will be attracted back because the positive, that positive, uh, positive gold leaf electroscope is going to attract those electrons back. 
Roman II, when a neutral gold leaf electroscope is used in the above experiment, the gold leaf diverges, and this is because the electrons will be emitted and a negative charge will be left on the zinc plate. Both the metal plate and the gold leaf acquire a positive charge or they will become less negative and the leaf diverges due to repulsion. Um, the last one, um, last note, when a radiation of low frequency such as infrared is used, no electron will be emitted from the zinc plate and there will be no change in the divergence of the leaf. Okay, Here is your exercise. I won't read anything. Just please pause, copy it, and do the needful. Okay. You can always pause. Eh? You pause and then you copy. Then you proceed. Part C is here. I remain Monday Dennis, and this is my YouTube channel, Monday Dennis Uganda. Please, I still encourage you. We are fighting together the coronavirus. Share these videos with the students. Let them excel in physics. Share with your students. Share with your child. Share with the neighbor's child. Share with anyone who needs these materials. Those in S3. Let those in S4. Let them use these materials freely and excel in physics. Thank you very much. Um, and for your all your online printing services, I still encourage you to contact me on that number and also engineer Emma Chironda on that given number so that you can make an order and then we print for you wherever you will be we shall bring the work to you if you send it via WhatsApp or Telegram thank you very much for listening God bless you stay safe for good and my country